Hey, what's going on everybody? In this topic, I'm gonna give you an introduction to using Flexbox in CSS in about 10 minutes or so. Why don't you go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's jump in everybody. We have a little bit of setup to do. We'll create a div element with the class of container. Within our container class, we'll create a few div elements. We'll create four. These will be boxes. For the class, I will set that to be box. The first inner div element will have an ID of box one. The inner text will be one. Let's copy our inner div element, paste it three times for a total of four, change box one to box two for the next element, then three, then four. And that's all we need for our HTML file. Let's go to our style sheet. We'll style our boxes. We will select the box class. I'll set the width to be 150 pixels. Same thing goes with the height. Let's change the background colors. We'll begin with the ID of box one. I will set the background color to be something red. I'll use HSL values because I like them. Let's go with that. Then let's color box two. Box two, let's make that yellow. Box three will be green. Then box four will be blue. Let's change the font size real quick. Font size, 8EM, then text, align, center. I'll add a border radius just to round the corners. Border, radius, 15 pixels. And that is all the setup we'll need. We are ready to begin. With our container class, we can flex all of the elements within this container, meaning all of these inner div elements. So we'll take our container class dot container, then set the display property to be flex. You can see that the positioning of these elements has already changed. By default, the flex direction property is set to row. You can see that there's no apparent change when I refresh the page. For a row, but in reverse order, we can set flex direction to be row reverse. So now one is on the right hand side, followed by two, three, then four. To arrange these elements within a column, we can set flex direction to be column, or even column reverse. Then at the bottom we have one, then two, three, then four. So that's flex direction. Let's delete the flex direction property. Then we have the justify content property. Justify content sets the alignment on the main axis. Think of the X axis. By default, it's flex start. There's no apparent change. Flex end would justify the content at the end. See, we're beginning with four, then three, two, and one. When we had flex direction set to row reverse, it was one, two, three, four. But in this case, it's four, three, two, one. Then there's center if you need to center align these elements on the main axis. We can place the extra space evenly between each of these elements by setting justify content to space between. And if I were to expand this page, the space between them is increasing. You also have space around. The area outside of these elements is also included now with space around. Then we have space evenly. All right, and that is the justify content property. We can justify elements on the main axis. Then there's the cross axis. Think of it as the Y axis up and down. What we'll need to do in this example is expand our container. Just to show you the size of the container, I will add a border to the container class. Border, 10 pixels, solid, black. Here's my current container. I will increase the height of the container. Let's set the height to be 90 viewport height units. So this is the total size of my container now. 90% of the height of the web page. What we'll use now is the align items property, which is used for the cross axis. Align dash items. 
The default is flex start. There's no change. Flex end will place these elements at the bottom of our container. Then there's center. Align item center. That will place them in the middle of the cross axis. Then there's baseline. So with baseline, the text is going to be aligned. They're all the same size, though. We can't really notice the difference. With box 1, let me change the font size. Font size 1 EM. You can see that the number 1 is aligned with the rest of the characters. So if I were to increase the font size, you can see that they're still aligned. But let's eliminate that font size property. Let's delete our align items property. We'll need more elements. Let's copy our four inner div elements, paste them. We should have a total of eight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can see that these items are getting squished now. They're all being compressed. We can set the flex wrap property. So with our container, I will set the flex wrap property to be wrap. These elements will now wrap if there's not enough space. If I were to expand the size of my container, there's now enough room, but if we run out of room, they'll be pushed down further down the page. By default, flex wrap is no wrap. Otherwise, there's wrap reverse. Now they're in reverse order. Let's use flex wrap. Now flex wrap is used along with another property named align content. Align content. If I were to set align content to be flex start, all of that space between the first row and the second is now gone. Then there's flex end. Center. Space evenly. Then space between. Use any combination of properties that I've demonstrated. Let's keep flex wrap as wrap, but I'll use flex start. You can also add a gap between the rows and the columns between each of these elements. Let's set a column gap, column dash gap to be one EM. That adds a gap between each of the columns. For the rows, that would be row gap. I'll set that to be 1EM. You can also use pixels as well. So here's 2EM and 3. Let's delete our gap properties. Alright, let's also delete the extra four boxes that we have. We're also going to get rid of the flex wrap property as well as align content. There's also the align self property that can be applied to single elements. So with box one, I will set align self to be start. That's the default. This element will be aligned at the top of our container. If I were to change align self to be center, this single element is aligned in the center of my container on the cross axis. Then we have end. That will align at the bottom. The align self property can be applied to any of these elements. Let's do that with number two. Align dash self. At the start, there is no change. Center. End. Okay, let's delete the align self property. We can use order to change the order of these elements. With box one, I will set the order to be one. That will place number one at the end. Negative one would be the beginning, which it normally is already. With box two, I'll set the order to be one. That will place two at the end. But if I set it to be negative one, it's now at the beginning. All right, everybody. So that is a quick introduction to Flexbox. There is a lot to talk about, and that is all the time that I have for this topic. And well, that's an introduction to Flexbox in CSS.